10 years ago, Apple took a big risk. They transformed the Mac Pro from a fairly traditional tower computer into this. A crazy looking cylindrical design that is unlike anything that came before or has come since. And famously, it was a colossal failure. It was so bad that Apple actually publicly apologized and said that they were going to build a better Mac Pro. If you know anything about Apple, you know that getting them to publicly say that they did something wrong is basically impossible. So yeah, this thing was really bad. But it's always kind of fascinated me and I've made several videos over the past five or six years about this thing, why it failed, how it could have worked, et cetera, et cetera. But today, something interesting is happening and that is that the Trash Can Mac Pro is finally becoming cheap. And I think that means the Trash Can Mac Pro is worth revisiting. What made it good? What made it bad? And is it worth buying today? Let's get into it right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Incogni, one of the best personal privacy tools out there. Every day, data brokers make money storing and selling your data. From seemingly innocuous things like shopping history, to personal details like date of birth, address, your full name, and more. These brokers can then sell to unscrupulous companies, or worse, be targeted by data thieves who can breach their servers and let your data end up in the hands of scammers. But Incogni protects your information by dealing with data brokers on your behalf to remove your data. It just takes three simple steps. First, create an account. Then grant Incogni the right to work on your behalf and then kick back and watch them get to work. I created an account for myself and requested data removal and within seconds, Incogni sent more than 100 requests to some pretty shady looking brokers that I've never even heard of. It even provides a rating of severity for each company. And believe me, as a YouTuber, my data ends up in a lot of places that I don't want it to be. Incogni gives me tangible reassurance that my data can be contained. So definitely check them out with the link in the description below and use my special Special code for 60% off an annual plan. A big thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to it. It all started back in WWDC of 2013, nearly 11 years ago, when Phil Schiller walked out on stage and unveiled one of the most radical Mac designs that has ever existed. And he also rather infamously said this. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. Now look, I'm sorry, Phil, but that did not age well, as when the 2013 Mac Pro actually hit the public audience, people were absolutely enraged. And that's because the Trash Can Mac Pro did away with everything that Mac Pro fans held sacred since its launch in 2006. And let's be honest, even before that, during the Power Mac days. It has a new drive carrier, so you can insert the drives, up to four of them, without any cables, without any tools, they just snap right in place. This was a huge middle finger to the traditional Mac Pro audience. I mean, before this thing, Mac Pros were the absolute king of music and video production houses, editing bays, even a lot of laboratories used them because they were just so simple, easy to upgrade, and they lasted forever. Now that last one actually you could say about the 2013 Mac Pro, but that's only because after it was announced, Apple just kind of forgot that they had to upgrade it, I guess. There were no new CPUs, no new GPUs, no spec increases of any sort. It just sat there and rotted for six years before Apple came out with the 2019 Intel Mac Pro. But when we look back on this thing from a 2024 perspective, it's, uh, it's a little bit different because this thing's main failure was its lack of upgradability, except that it's actually very, very upgradable. The RAM is accessible without even a screwdriver, and there's only one screw that stands in the way of upgrading the SSD. Heck, you can upgrade the CPU in this thing as well. Although the catch is because Apple never gave this thing any motherboard upgrades, you're only locked in with a very small subset of Intel Xeon processors from this generation, 
And if you have watched my channel for a while, you'll know that when I built this absolutely maxed out Trash Can Mac Pro, it takes quite a bit of disassembly to get to that CPU. Now compare that to the previous 5,1 Mac Pro, that was of course a travesty, but compare it to the new Apple Silicon Mac Pro, which I've got just over there, and man, this thing seems really upgradable. And now that it and its components are cheap, you can actually build a maxed out trash can Mac Pro like this for very little money. You can find these things for as low as $200. And it doesn't really matter what CPU that comes with because you can upgrade to the maxed out 12 core Xeon for just $27. Yeah, old Xeons get cheap real fast, and this is no exception. The same goes for the RAM, as I found that you could put 64 gigabytes of DDR3 in this thing for just under 40 bucks. And when you consider that with a $9 adapter, you can use any NVMe drive you want, you could buy the Mac Pro, upgrade it to 64 gigabytes of RAM, a terabyte of storage, and a 12 core Xeon for 360 bucks. That's not bad at all. And it pretty much solves the biggest complaint that I've had with this thing, it's price. Back in the Intel days, these things were kind of on a pedestal because it was like the newest and most powerful Mac Pro that you could get for six years. So they were way too expensive to ever be worth buying. But now with a couple years of Apple Silicon under our belt, these things are dirt cheap. So has the narrative on the 2013 Mac Pro shifted? Is this actually worth buying at this price point? Well, no. Unfortunately, the trash can Mac Pro, it just can't catch a break. It really was an interesting design and it's one that I would have absolutely loved to be able to recommend. But the problem, the problem is very simple. It's the Mac Mini. You can buy an M1 Mac Mini for just about $400. So give or take the exact same amount of money as it would cost to build a maxed out Mac Pro. The key difference being that the M1 Mac Mini, you just take out of the box and plug it in. You don't have to do all of this. So immediately, before I even tell you about the performance, the Trash Can Mac Pro is obviously not as good a deal. But I'm afraid that performance doesn't really help it either. See, if you run Cinebench on both of these machines, what you'll find is that even the most powerful Trash Can Mac Pro is not as powerful as the least powerful Apple Silicon machine. Oh, and it's probably worth mentioning that in order to achieve that inferior performance, the Trash Can Mac Pro needs to draw 150 watts of power just for the CPU versus 60 watts for the entire Mac Mini's system. Yeah, Apple Silicon is really good, oh man. It's kind of insane when you think about it because when this trash can Mac Pro was new, fully maxed out, it would have cost $9,599. And less than a decade later, the least expensive Mac in the lineup is more powerful than it. And if you're looking for any redeeming scenarios where the Mac Pro might just edge out the Mac mini, you're not gonna find them because the graphics cards on these things are really, really antiquated. I mean, 2013 was before we had this really big renaissance period for the GPU. In fact, the graphics on this thing are a big reason why it's so weird and why it was hard for Apple to upgrade. Back in 2013, running machines with dual graphics was a lot more common than it is now. So Apple designed the Mac Pro based around a dual GPU architecture. If you take the top off of this thing, you'll notice that the heatsink is a triangle. And that's because it has one side for the CPU and two sides for each GPU. Very shortly after this thing came out, the whole idea of running your machine with dual graphics cards kind of fell off. So in much the same way that you don't see PC bros SLIing their GTX 980 Ti's together anymore, you don't see it in the Mac either. The problem was this entire computer was designed with that being the case. And that has impacts across everything that you can do. Games are only able to run with a single GPU a lot of the time. And in video editing, the fact that this thing is running on a Xeon means you don't have Intel Quick Sync, which just torpedoes your rendering time. Obviously, Apple Silicon is, is really good at video editing, but as bad as you think this could be, it's worse. Because with these old GPUs and no Quick Sync, I mean, forget about it. 
All right, look, I really wanted to get a graph of how bad these Final Cut Pro render times were, but after 25 minutes, we're at 26%. So let's just say it's really, really bad, okay? I'll, I'll leave it at that. Is that cool with you guys? Now, funny enough, Blender is an application that can recognize both GPUs. However, if you do the GPU compute test with the Metal API, it doesn't work. Just completely freezes and crashes the application. You have to run it without Metal Acceleration, which means that even though you're using both GPUs, they're painfully slow. And while I was filming this review, I found the IO on this really, really limiting because it came out in 2013. It's using Thunderbolt 2. It has six Thunderbolt 2 ports. The problem was Thunderbolt 2 didn't catch on. It's ironic, isn't it? Because when Apple switched to USB-C, we kind of made fun of them. But now not having USB-C ports is the limitation. And it makes this thing really hard to use for a lot of modern applications. And so once again, the Mac Pro just evades logic. It is not a machine that you should buy for pretty much any case. The only time that it really makes sense to buy a trash can Mac Pro is if it's literally so cheap that you can't say no. I found this Reddit post where someone paid $51. I mean, look, if you find one for 51 bucks, you should buy it. But at market value, it just, it still doesn't make sense. The biggest problem that this Mac Pro had since it came out was its price. It was just too expensive for what it was. But now it has continued to become more and more obsolete and out of date. And even though it's really cheap now, you can also get a really cheap Mac mini. And honestly, I'm a little bummed. I've always had a soft spot for the trash can Mac Pro. I have it on my set back here for a reason. I absolutely love the design of this thing and I, I wish that Apple could bring it back with Apple Silicon. I mean, look, they've already thrown in the towel on upgradability. You might as well have a bit of fun with the design. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about the Trash Can Mac Pro. Are you like me? Have you always had a soft spot for it and wished that it would make sense? Do you also just have one sitting on a shelf because it looks so nice? Let me know in the comments below and of course, be sure to subscribe. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.